Hello, hello guys. Welcome to day 16 of 30 Days of Mime. We are still dealing with data cleaning, transformation, and general data preparation. So far, we've written our data on airline flights. We've explored the data. We've gotten rid of missing values, the first phase. We have narrowed down to the data we want. We've done some if logic. We have replaced some values. Now today I want to show you how you can splice up your data into two parts because sometimes you might need to do this when you need to do something to a part of the data while you want the other part to remain unchanged. And I'm also going to show you how you bring the data back together. So I'm going to be using two nodes of focus today. Right now we have lots of numerical values. And if you remember, I left the cleaning for numerical values to later because for me, it depends a lot on whether or not the flight is canceled. Because if we have a, if we have a canceled flight, we're gonna see these values missing. So departure time, departure delay, taxi out, that kind of information, it's gonna be missing. And that's, of course, that makes sense when the flight is canceled. So when it's missing and the flight is canceled, I don't want to do any missing value fixes or filtering. However, when the flight is not canceled and these are missing, then it needs to be attended to. So this is a scenario whereby you might want to split your data set. And a very, very easy way to do this is using the row splitter node, this one. So this node looks a lot like the row filter node, which I spent a day on before. In this node, you can make a split based on a column. So in our case, we're going to be making this split based on the canceled column. Okay. When you split, you get two nodes. You get the one on top and at the bottom. So the one on top is what you specify here. So I want the false to be on top because the one on top is going to be the default you see in this node preview area. And that's what I want in my case. So let me run that really quick. When I click on this, I can see filtered has given me the false canceled ones and then filtered out has given me the ones which were true for canceled. So here I have all the flights that were not cancelled. Now, if a flight was not cancelled, I do not want to have any missing information for these time variables because this is something I'm going to come to later on. I do need to uh, fix this because these should be in military time. So that's something I'm going to do off screen. But I'm going to send you, I'm going to show you my full workflow later on. So if the flight was cancelled, sorry, if the flight was not cancelled, I don't want anything missing. So I'm going to apply the missing value filter again, which we saw before. And here I'm just going to say that for numerical variables, I want it to remove the row entirely because I don't want anything with missing values if a flight was not cancelled. That's why I performed the split. So I can apply the missing values to flights which were not cancelled. So after I run this, you can see I only lose about five rows of data, which is, it's, it's pretty small. So now that I've, so now that I've split my data into canceled flights and not canceled flights, how do I put them back together? Well, this is extremely easy using the concatenate node. And by the way, here's a pro tip for this node. You can actually concatenate more than two files because you see here, you only have two input ports, but if you click on this, you can actually add an input port and you can con concatenate more than two streams of data. But in our case, I only need two. So usually if you're concatenating two tables, because right now I more or less have two tables. I have the one from here and the one from here. If the columns are equivalent, then it's usually very, very easy. You don't even need to configure. In my case, it's equivalent, so I just run it. So, but if you do have columns which are different in both tables, then you can go in here to change these settings. You can decide that if you have different columns, you only want to use the columns in, in similar to both tables. So, so that'll be using the intersection of the columns or it defaults to using the union of the columns. So if you have a column in one table, which is missing in the other, you're just going to get question marks for that part of the data. But usually in my case, I use it when my data is equivalent, but you can use it when your data is different. And you also have options for handling duplicate rows. If you have duplicate rows IDs, you can skip the rows. You can append the surface duplicate. That's what it defaults to, or you can fail on execution. Okay. So 
Anyway, that has run. I have split the data into two so I can perform some missing value eliminations on the flights which are not cancelled. And I've joined my data back together using the concatenate node. And tomorrow we're going to look at pivoting and groupings. These are very, very important things you need to be able to know and do in data you know analysis slash transformation. So those two videos might be might be a bit on the longer side. I'm trying to keep these under five minutes. I'll try to go as fast as I can, but those two videos might be a bit more involved. And then we're going to go back to Twitter data to look a bit on dealing with textual data. All right, you guys, that is the end of day 16. I hope you're really enjoying this. Oh, look, I have labeled my notes. This is so important, by the way, to label your notes, especially when you have extremely large workflows. It can become a spider web really quickly. So just the same way you're supposed to label your code be sure to label your note it helps a lot that's a pro tip anyways you guys have a lovely one thank you goodbye